High in the foothills of Tuolumne County, near Yosemite National Park, lies the former mining community of Jamestown, California. It was in this frontier mining town where the gold rush of 1849 began. Early in 1848, a prospecting party led by pioneer James Woods unearthed gold in a nearby creek. This discovery, coming mere months after a gold deposit was struck in the American River near Sutter's Mill, confirmed that the Sutter claims were not a fluke and ultimately set the Great California Gold Rush in motion. Nearly half a century later, the first California Gold Rush had long since faded into history, and the local economy was in decline. The remaining hard rock mining interests required more efficient means of transportation for moving the heavy loads into the San Joaquin Valley for processing and distribution. These needs were met with the construction of the Sierra Railway Company of California in 1897, and for the first time in its history, Tuolumne County was linked to the rest of the nation by rail. Today's Sierra Railroad is still an active common carrier with many new and long-time customers. Chief among the businesses served by the railroad is the Sierra Pacific Industries Standard Mill. Located at the current end of the railroad in an area known as Fassler, the Standard Mill was one of the original interests served by the Sierra Railway. At one time, Tuolumne County was home to the famous Pickering and Westside Lumber Companies, both of which were served by the Sierra. Throughout the decades, the lumber industry has played a critical role in both the history and survival of the Sierra Railroad. With several new customers now opting for rail transportation, the future is bright for this 120-year-old short line. Apart from its history with the lumber companies, the Sierra is most widely known as the Movie Railroad. Since 1919, the Sierra Railroad has provided its roster of vintage railroad equipment to Hollywood filmmakers for use in over a hundred television and movie credits. Most notably, High Noon, Little House on the Prairie, Unforgiven, Wild Wild West, Back to the Future Part 3, and Petticoat Junction. A short walk from Old Main Street in Jamestown is Railtown 1897. This state historic park preserves the original shop buildings and rolling stock of the Sierra Railway. The state of California acquired the 26-acre site in 1982 following the sale of the Sierra Railroad Company to new owners. One of the popular attractions at Railtown 1897 are train rides behind historic steam and diesel locomotives. Steam trains operate on Saturdays from April through October and holiday weekends during the summer months while rides behind vintage diesel locomotives operate on Sundays and select weekends year-round. Trains depart the historic Jamestown Depot four times each operating day, beginning at 10.30 on Saturday and Sunday mornings. The Railtown excursion trains operate over a three-mile portion of the Sierra Railroad, the same freight hauling common carrier which began operating in 1897. Moving on to the historic Jamestown Roundhouse, several steam locomotives and cars are stored and maintained just as they have been over the past century. This roundhouse was constructed in 1910 after the preceding wooden structure burned down. Beyond the entrance to the roundhouse, engine number three is readied for the day's operation. Number three is a 460 10-wheeler type locomotive and was built by the Rogers Locomotive and Machine Works in 1891 for the Prescott and Arizona Central Railroad. The locomotive began its tenure on the Sierra Railway in 1897 when it was used in the railroad's construction. Originally retired from service in 1932, shop forces saved her from scrapping during the Second World War and were granted permission to overhaul the locomotive for movie and excursion service. Engine number three continued to serve on the Sierra between 1948 and 1982 when the last of the railroad's original owners donated the collection of historic rail equipment at Jamestown to the state of California. At 125 years old, number three is the oldest operable locomotive at Railtown, as well as one of the oldest operating steam locomotives in America. As number three moves out of the roundhouse, the crew backs the engine onto the turntable. This turntable was purchased by the Sierra Railway in 1922 and replaced the original wooden Armstrong turntable in that year.
After backing off the turntable, the locomotive takes on oil and the crew opens the blow-off valve to help remove sediment from the boiler. Crucial to the operation of any steam railroad is a working water tank. This structure was originally built in 1938 and was rebuilt in 2002 after the previous water tank fell into disrepair. This is the last remaining water tank on the entire Sierra Railroad. After performing some last minute switching to prepare today's train, the crew eases number three into the depot area to couple to today's consist. This is our track warrant. Uh, track warrants are basically uh, our authority to get out on the main track. We do not own the tracks here at Railtown. So what we have to do is the Sierra Railroad, Sierra Northern Railway actually writes us warrants, which look like this. And this warrant here gives us authority to operate on their track between Rock Siding and basically Jamestown. And we just have to check over it and make sure that our in effect date and our authority expires that is good for the entire time. Also comes with what they call a Form A, which is our speed restrictions. Our speed restrictions tell us how fast we can go on the track that we're running on. And it comes with a track condition message that tells us about basically walk conditions. There's a drain fist on the side of the track that's not working properly. So all in all, it's basically a packet of authority and bulletins that tell us what we need to do when we get on track that's not owned by us. We couldn't even open the mainline switch until we had this. And so now that we have this, we can actually open the mainline switch. So when you're doing switching moves like we were this morning, it's a lot of stop and go and a lot of stop and go and a lot of stop and go. So you have to be constantly on your controls, paying attention to what the engineer is doing, thinking about what your next move is. Switching tends to use up your steam and your water pretty quickly, so you want basically want to keep your fire hot all the time. When we're running our normal trips, it's a pretty leisurely trip downhill, so you can kind of rest and relax a little bit. Switching is really, really a situation where you have to stay on everything. Now that we're basically done switching, I planned ahead, so I have basically my water level, my steam pressure pretty much right where I want it. After we do our air brake test, we're going to be sitting for about half an hour, so I'm pretty much pretty good where I need to be. Shortly following its 10.30 departure, the train passes an area formerly known as Quartz Junction. Quartz Junction was once the location of the Sierra Railway's connection to the 30-inch gauge Yosemite Short Line Railway. This railroad began construction in 1905, but was halted when the 1906 San Francisco earthquake forced financiers to withdraw their interests. Now nearing the halfway point on its three mile descent to Rock Siding, Sierra No. 3 backs the excursion train across Bell Mooney Road, named for one of the region's historical figures.
After crossing Woods Creek Fill, locomotive number three begins to work hard pulling the heavyweight cars upgrade to rock siding. The fire patrol speeder seen in the distance here is following the train to make sure any fires sparked by the passing steam locomotive are extinguished quickly. Since there is no way to turn the train at rock siding, engine number three will uncouple and run around its train to prepare for the return departure. Number three has been cut off and will wait until the speeder clears this end of the passing track. The speeder takes its position inside the switch, giving the locomotive enough space to run around the train.
Now that the locomotive has recoupled to the train, the engineer gives two short reports on the whistle to signal the return trip to Jamestown. Engine number three will work very hard to keep the heavyweight coaches moving on the arduous climb up the 2.5% grade. Sierra number three again crosses Bell Mooney Road on its way back to Jamestown. Further up the line, the train passes through Quartz Junction, where the engineer and fireman begin sanding the flues. This process removes excess soot and solids from the boiler's fire tubes, allowing more efficient firing of the engine. Back at Jamestown, locomotive number three runs around its train to prepare for yet another six mile round trip to Rock Siding. Later in the day, the train once again approaches Bell Mooney Road crossing. As the Railtown excursion heads downgrade to Rock Siding, it passes a landmark known to locals as Rogers Cut. This is the location where several motion pictures were filmed as train robbers jumped from the cliffs onto the top of the train. On this particular day, Railtown is host to a special afternoon excursion chartered by the Central Coast Railway Club of San Jose, California. Between 1956 and 1967, Observation Car 2901 was owned by the club and named the Pharaoh Equinologist, meaning a student of the Iron Horse. A short time later, the train comes back into view on its way toward Jamestown.
The train slows to a stop mid-grade to allow passengers to disembark for a photo run-by at Rogers Cut. Promptly after completing the photo run-by, the excursionists reboard the train to complete the run back to Jamestown. As the train continues on its journey home, it's easy to get lost in the nostalgia of yesteryear. The operation of Railtown 1897 today serves as a last great reminder of the vital role that railroads once played in the Motherlode region, and we hope it will remain so for future generations to enjoy.